hey guys uh, welcome to wire or help and in today's video i'm gonna show you how to consume a rest web service in your android application so basically i have developed my own simple rest web service in java and this restful web service is giving me a json response which is just a you know json object and what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna call my web service from my java application and uh, i'm gonna fetch this json array so for this process i'm using an a library called vole vole library and uh, i'm sorry i don't know how to pronounce that vole or vole or something well uh, let's just assume it's vole all right so uh, this is an uh, library which is even recommended by android community so you can use this library even for commercial purposes uh, for sending uh, requests so i'm gonna use this uh, wallet library and before actually diving into coding uh, we have to add uh, dependencies to get the <coughs> objects all right and uh, so i'm going to open my uh, gradle file which is under app folder so i'm just going to add uh, two dependencies so the first one uh, let me just copy paste this one all right uh, well the first one is ole and the second one is for uh, JSON. Well, uh, this is just a library which is used to convert a uh, Java object to JSON and vice versa. And I have made uh, a video on this also, like how to convert Java objects to JSON and JSR to JSON to Java. So you can always watch that video also. And uh, the first library is for uh, Ole, which is actually used to send uh, requests, right? So these are the two dependencies and the next thing is we just have to add user permissions in android manifest file so i'm just going to quickly add you know internet permission internet for you know accessing resources and all all right i'm just going to add that internet permission all right just make sure that you're not mixing in application tag all right, those are the two things we have to do. First thing is dependency, and the second thing is adding internet permission. Well, once you are done with those two activities, now you can straight away go to your coding. And this is my basic activity, guys. It's just an empty activity I have created freshly. And uh, one more thing, I'm not actually creating a front-end user interface for it. So I'm just gonna straight away load my web service on launch of this activity itself. So first thing we have to do is first thing we have to do is we have to create a request queue. So uh, I'm just going to quickly create a request queue here. So and one more thing as before actually using this request queue on for the classes, you have to make sure that your project is in sync after adding this uh, dependency. So make sure you just you know rebuild your project after adding uh, these two libraries. All right, this request queue, and I'm just going to create an object here, request queue object. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call my wallet class, and and I'm just going to call new request queue method. So what it's going to do is it's going to uh, it's going to fetch me a request queue object for me. And as a parameter, you have to pass the context of this activity. So I'm just going to simply say this activity right and uh, now that you have your request queue the second thing is you have to construct your actual request and uh, there are three ways to construct your request the first one is you can uh, you, you can use json array request or uh, you can use json object request or you can use string request uh, well, there, well, there are still uh, you know different kind of requests. So, but basically for our project, uh, I'm actually uh, trying to fetch a JSON object. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a, a JSON object request in this tutorial. Uh, I'm sure the process is going to be same for uh, different kind of requests. All right, here you have JSON object request. And I'm just gonna call the object as let's say obj request, all right? And uh, I'm just gonna call the constructor all right. 
now uh, it's gonna show you error because basically there are a few parameters you have to pass to that constructor well if you open the JSON object request well it's gonna show you detailed description of what are all the parameters it will take well uh, the first thing is obviously you have to specify what kind of HTTP method you're going to use or uh, like whether you're going to send um, or like a get met get request or put post request or put or delete so for me I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna send a get request and just confirm alright my web service is taking get requests so I'm just gonna construct as get request here so the way you, you use you have to call that uh, request class and inside that method uh, method dot and you just have to say uh, get or post I don't know what is this let me remove this one alright request dot method dot get so this is the first parameter as you can see in the documentation you have to specify what kind of uh, method it is and the second thing is obviously your uh, endpoint so my endpoint is uh, this is my endpoint URL so I'm just gonna say right so as a second parameter uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna you know create a separate string for that Alright, the decent way to do is you, you basically you're gonna have to create a separate constant file and that's up to you how you decide your endpoints and all. So I'm just right away using my endpoint here. And so what what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna replace localhost with my uh, IP address. So this is my uh, final endpoint now. Uh, so basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to send a JSON object request uh, which is actually get request to this endpoint restful endpoint well that's two parameters uh, let me just go through the what is uh, third parameter well third parameter is actually uh, a input like suppose if your web service is taking any input and if you want to send any parameters to your uh, web service uh, you can always specify in a JSON object but uh, I'm not actually sending any input parameters to my web service so I'm just gonna simply uh, say null uh, well uh, the remaining two are very very uh, important actually I mean it's kind of confusing for you it's not a straight parameter what you have to do is you have to implement a listener interface and you have to override respect to methods so those are the next two methods uh, which is actually listener and error listener these two are the interface and you have to implement and you have to override respect to methods All right so let me just uh, quickly implement it new let's say response dot listener so uh, what I'm doing is I'm actually selecting that uh, a response dot listener so so that it will actually create a stub for me All right it created it automatically created the stub <coughs> all right so what I'm trying to do is I have a listener interface and I'm trying to uh, create an anonymous class and I'm trying to override on response method well this is a callback method so what's gonna happen is whenever your uh, request is fetching your response it will actually shoot out in your uh, response JSON object response variable well I ignore all these errors um, I, I'm, I'm just gonna erase all those things alright so this is the fourth fourth parameter and the last and final thing is the same uh, callback method but this time it's actually for error response so which means if there is any error in your request it's gonna call this method alright so let me just implement that Alright, it's actually a response dot error listener. So it's actually created the stub for me. So these are the two uh, callback method guys. So whenever you have an response, you wanna get it in your response variable and you have if you have any error, you wanna get it in your error class. And as I said before, it's gonna send you in a JSON object. 
so if you want to convert to your response to your java object let's say for example this is my response here which is an json object and if you want to convert to my local you know a local object then you have to use a json library which i said here json library and as i said before i have created another video for that so i'm just not going to discuss about this in this video so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to create a log statement here and i'm just going to say rest response sorry response dot to string I'm just gonna copy and copy the, and do the same thing in error also now it's not actually over there's actually one more thing we have to do now that we have your request queue and you have your request object so what we have to do is we just have to take this request queue and to that request queue we have to add that request so this is my request and I'm adding my request to that request queue so, so this is it guys Th just, just a three line statement the first thing is you have to create a request queue and you have to construct your request and the last thing is you just have to add that to your request queue it's very very simple and straightforward now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run my app now you cannot actually see the response in my in, in in my app because I'm not you know I'm not adding it to my views and all but what I'm doing is I'm just gonna add it to my uh, I have added to my logger statement so I'm gonna show you how that works all right so let me just run my app as I said I'm not using any emulator I'm straight away using my mobile all right it's gonna take some time to build so I'm just gonna pause until that time Alright, it's actually launching my activity now. Alright, as you can see here, uh, in the logger, I don't know whether you can see it or not, the font is very small. Uh, here I have my rest response as my key and as you can see in the logger, it says rest response and this is my JSON response. So here you go, this is my uh, JSON response and when I try to hit it, uh, it's actually catching my response here and I'm printing that response so uh, you can see the response here so uh, this is very very simple response uh, simple rest service guys so I know I, I'm sure uh, you know how to handle your own restful web services and as I said before and if you, if you have to convert your Java objects you can refer my video on how to convert JSON to Java object and uh, this is it guys if you have any doubts you can always uh, reach me out in comments uh, thanks for viewing if you like this video don't forget to share and subscribe thank you very much